If you've been watching my videos, then you know that I am a fan of elm trees, Catlin elm in particular. And when I do all my pruning, I end up with a large number of cuttings. And rather than throw them in the compost, I will propagate. So what I do to propagate, take a cutting. Smaller is better, but I have enough small cuttings that I'm not uh, getting worked up over it. So I'm going to try and make some slightly larger cuttings. I like to cut below a leaf node because that's where the undifferentiated cell tissue is. I like to reduce any material that could get stuck underneath the soil and potentially rot. So you want to strip off those bottom leaves. Generally speaking, you're also looking to remove up to 90% of the foliage because the foliage transpires, which is basically breathing out water. And what you want to do is reduce your transpirational loss while the plant is trying to make leaves. Because the roots supply the leaves with water and obviously we don't have any roots. So I need to reduce the amount of moisture loss and the way to do that is to remove the foliage. Now, my instructor used to say go for some big ones. You never know who's going to root and the worst that could happen is it doesn't root and you were going to compost it anyway so does it really matter. So I also like to go for some crazy ones. Now this one I'm going to cut with the hopes that maybe it will become a twin trunk. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, that's the kind of plant that would almost give its own container to root into. Now, I don't have 100% success rate with cuttings, so I put as many cuttings as I can inside the tray, knowing that I'm not going to have 100% success rate. Now, when you're defoliating your cuttings, you should not strip down because you run the risk of the leaf snagging and peeling off the bark. So if you want to be quick and lazy, you can go with the direction of the growth. Or you could sit there and remove them individually. Not a bad idea to scratch the base of the cutting. Now I didn't have, well I made these cutting several days ago and I didn't have a chance to set them right away so they've been sitting in water. Another way to do that is to wrap them in a moist, not wet, moist paper towel almost as if you were preserving celery or uh, not celery, some herb inside your refrigerator. Keep them cool and moist until you're ready to set your cuttings. Back in the old days, they used to do something called stratification, where they would take the cuttings, put them in a bundle, bury them underground for the winter, and then set them in the spring. I don't have that luxury. So that's a big funky knob that I don't need. Off it goes. Alright. Now what you're supposed to do is take each of these cuttings and roll them in a separate container of rooting hormone. And you're also supposed to make a pilot hole. But I don't have the time, the energy, or the desire to do that. And if I get 
50% success rate on these, I'm going to have more than I know what to do with. As it is, I have more than what I know to do with. Now, sometimes I get really, really lazy, and I'll take the whole bundle, and I'll put them directly inside the container rooting hormone, smack it around, knock off the excess, and then stick. Now, you're not supposed to do that for a couple reasons. The main reason is that you'd be contaminating your rooting hormone if you have any kind of fungus or disease, okay? You'd be leaving that inside your rooting hormone. And the other thing I do is I tend to play a numbers game. Since I'm not going to have 100% success on these cuttings, I'll put as many as I can inside the propagation tray knowing that I'm not going to have 100% success rate. But I'm also going to have to be vigilant and make sure that I remove any cuttings that haven't taken root. Otherwise they'll rot and contaminate the rooting medium and then all your work is lost. I always like to try and find some funky ones to set probably set that one as well. Lazy way, strip it against the grain. Lazy way. Go with the grain. Cut below a leaf node. remove them individually. It's up to you. You decide how you want to proceed. And then proper way, individual dip in the rooting hormone that is not inside the container so you don't cross contaminate. Lazy way dip them inside dip them inside the container of hormone and be prepared that you may have to throw out your hormone and at eight dollars a bottle you might not want to do that so we'll do a couple more here then we'll super thrive them in And constantly asked, what is Super Thrive? Super Thrive is a vitamin hormone complex that stimulates root growth. It is not a fertilizer. It can help you when you're propagating plants. It can help you when you root prune plants. You can use it year round. Whereas fertilizer, you wouldn't be using in the winter. This you could use on house plants, propagation, whatever you're doing all year long. Okay, super thrive it in, then put it on your propagation bench. That should be an area where you're not exposed to full sun because you'll fry the cuttings. You want to make sure you have some humidity. You can put a plastic bag over them if you're doing this in the house. My greenhouse is fairly humid, so I don't get worked up about it. I put them on top of the propagation mat and leave them alone, except to spray them regularly with some Super Thrive or even just mist, plain old tap water, mist them in. It's all about reducing the transpirational loss while the plant makes a new set of roots. So 
have fun go make some babies and if you think of it like subscribe all that jazz <laughs>